Um, so if we look at how big the problem is, you know, why are we so concerned about diabetic feet? Just to give you some idea of the global picture, approximately somewhere in the world, every 30 seconds, there's an amputation that goes on as a result of diabetic foot problems. So during this presentation, in the 30 minutes of presentation, 60 people will have lost their legs. And that's the, the global picture. For those that are joining us from the UK, there are approximately 175 amputations carried out every week. For those that are working within the National Health or linked with the National Health, that amounts to nearly one pound in every hundred pounds spent on the National Health budget. Diabetic foot complications amount to approximately one billion pounds a year spend. Uh, depending on which uh, which data you read. Um, so what are the complications and why are we worried about complications? I know the audience is, is, is composed of, of, of lay people as well as health care professions. So we'll try and keep it relatively simple. If we can look at your diabetic foot as your house, then several things can go wrong within your house. One, in the diabetic foot, you may not have enough blood reaching the, the foot, what we call ischemia. So this is similar to the plumbing going wrong in your house. And this can cause obvious problems with uh, uh, um, healing of, of wounds and in its worst case scenario lead to uh, ulcerations and gangrene. The second problem that can occur is the wiring can go wrong, the electrics if you like, and you can end up with something called neuropathy. This is where patient's sensation is altered. So some patients will have extreme amounts of pain, whilst other patients will have no sensation at all. So in other words, they can stand on a razor blade, they can stand on nails, they can burn their feet on hot water bottles without knowing that they've done that. They can rub their, their feet on tight shoes and hence develop ulcers. The third problem with diabetic feet is the ability to fight infection. So once the wound has occurred, either due to the ischemia, lack of circulation, or due to the neuropathy, which is the, the insensate, insensitive foot, if you get a wound, then there's more chance that you'll get an infection and that infection can spread very, very quickly. The fourth problem is the architecture and the structure of your house. So in other words, you can get deformity and collapse of the architecture of the foot. At its worst, this is something called a Charcot arthropathy, where the foot completely collapses <clears throat> as a result of nerve damage and minor trauma that goes unnoticed. So, so now we've discussed the, the, the four things that can happen with feet. How do we manage these? So you can't treat every patient with the same treatment regime. So nice guidelines. Of, kindly categorize the feet into low, moderate, and high risk patients and those with active problems. So the low risk patients are those that do not have neuropathy, they don't have nerve damage, and they have good circulation. Uh, and provided their diabetes control is within reason, then they can be treated more or less as the non-diabetic population. And what, what the NICE guidelines recommend is that these patients should have an annual checkup. So in other words, once a year, um, the podiatrist, the doctor, the specialist nurse, whoever needs to check the circulation, needs to check for deformity and needs to check the uh, nerve supply to the feet. The moderate risk patients, these are patients that have either deformity either uh, bad circulation or indeed 
uh, neuropathy, nerve damage, they need slightly more regular podiatry input. And this could be dependent on the type of uh, uh, deformity and the extent of nerve and, and damage and the level of circulatory problems. It tends to vary between four and six weeks they need to visit their podiatrist. The high risk patients are those with nerve damage and one of the others, or ischemia and one of the others, or deformity and one of the others. In other words, you can have ischemia with deformity, ischemia with nerve damage, nerve damage with deformity, nerve, uh, nerve damage with, with ischemia and so forth. These patients are also those that have had previous ulcers. So if you've had an ulcer before, or indeed an amputation, whether that's a small amputation, such as a toe or a, or a major amputation, your feet are very, very much at risk of re and your chances of further amputations are much, much higher. So these are the patients that really need to be seen and monitored closely by the healthcare profession, mainly the, 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 the podiatrists. Then the last category are those patients that have got an active problem. So if you're one of those patients that have got an infection, an ulcer, uh, gangrene, or, 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 or uh, acute deformity that started something called the Charcot arthropathy, where the foot collapses, uh, then you need to be seen very, very quickly. The NICE guidelines recommend that the referral should be made to a multidisciplinary team within a day of you seeing your, your healthcare profession and you ought to be triaged and seen very, very quickly. If you are unfortunate enough to be admitted in hospital, a treatment plan needs to be made within one day. King's College London uh, very nicely coined the phrase foot attack which is like a heart attack. So you treat the diabetic foot in the same way, in the same, with the same urgency as you would if you had a stroke or a heart attack, because the, in, in these scenarios, the foot is very, very much at risk. So within the multidisciplinary team, most health authorities now within the UK have multidisciplinary teams. In Leicester, as, as Mr. Vaz uh, kindly uh, uh, mentioned, we have one of the oldest multidisciplinary teams, I think, in the world. It started in the 1940s. Not that I was a founder member of that. Um, and and uh, uh, during the global lower limb amputation study in 1995, Leicester came as one of the least likely places for you to lose your um, uh, leg as a result of diabetes. The multidisciplinary team, we have a whole wide range of healthcare professions, ranging from the diabetes specialists, the diabetes consultants, diabetes uh, specialist nurses, who will look after your diabetes. The, 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 the better your diabetes control is, the, 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 the better chances of you healing your ulcers. We also have vascular surgeons to look at the circulation and at Glenfield Hospital, we have a world-class vascular department that is newly built with four million pounds of uh, uh, fund monies. Um, we have an orthotist that will design footwear that is essential once your ulcers have healed to try and reduce the risks of uh, recurrence of these. We have surgeons such as myself and orthopedic surgeons that will look after any of the um, deformities and uh, deal with any, any uh, infection issues. We have our consultant microbiologists that will give us advice on the best way of managing uh, infections within the diabetes foot. Lester's always been a, a leader with diabetic feet. We, we invented uh, the, the, the something called the Scotch cast boot, which is an offloading gadget that is still uh, a leader in the management of pressure relief for ulcers. Uh, we've been leading the, the way with uh, new innovations like use of antibiotic cements to try and salvage um, uh, 
feet as, as, as best as we can. So this is just a summary of what can happen with the diabetic feet and how these are managed in a more acute environment 